Hey, what's up everybody? In this tutorial, I will teach you how to paint a dwarf. But what makes this tutorial different is this time I'm going to paint a dwarf without using any sketch line. But before we start the tutorial, let me remind you, if you really like this tutorial, please click the subscribe button and also click the notification bell. This will help me to grow my channel. Also, let me remind you, if you really want to know more about uh, concept art, drawing, tutorials, etc., you can click the link in the description. That will take you to my blog. It's called improveyourdrawings.com. And there you will find, like I said, many articles, many tutorials for free. So with that being said, let's start the tutorial. When you start painting a, a character and you decide not to use any line, just use shapes using the brush strokes to define the main shapes of the of whatever you're going to paint. And in this case, it's going to be a bust. It's going to be a head with the shoulders. And I knew that the card will be a dwarf. And you're deciding not to use line work to, to define the main, the, the main shapes, like I said. It's very important that you immediately have a clear idea of, of first of all what the, what is going to be the the basic value the basic um, tone of gray that you're going to use for your for the for the base shape and then once you got that you got you got to use a, a quite big uh, a quite big brush and some big brush strokes to define well the the main out the main outline uh, like I, like you are uh, watching right now, what I'm doing is basically uh, using a, a darker tone of gray for defining what the the eye sockets and also the bottom of the nose, where the nostrils are. Okay, I'm not not drawing. What I'm using is I I'm using the darker areas and defining them. And basically, if you if you think about it, drawing it's more more or less this is you using line work to define where the 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 darker shadows are. And in this case, when you are using this technique, what you try to do is accentuate first where the deepest shadows are. In this case, like I said, what you you can see right now, the eye sockets, the nostrils, but. Instead of using a, a complete line and you completing that line, you just like uh, paint those areas and let and and don't create a complete line, uh, uh, complete closing lines. You leave that to the imagination of the of the viewer, and and you will use value to complete those those other areas. Also, as you can see, I'm using the same bra the same brush, maybe. Uh, making it bigger or smaller depending on the amount of detail that I want to add and I'm al already defining a little bit using some little darker lines where the mus the mustache and especially where the darker parts of the face will be like uh, uh, on, the, on the nostril sides etc. Also I'm using a brighter tone right now and I'm painting on the nose and, and over, the, over the, the eyebrow to define where the light is hitting it's important now that you start to define where the the, the main dar darker tones and the main brighter tones will be will be placed. Working in the mustache, working in the in the eyebrows, defining them. It's very important that you you do it, but not using a clear and defined lines. This is why I'm not using a very small uh, brush, and I'm I prefer to use a more brush stroke brush strokes instead of uh, really defined lines. Like if you were let's say inking or something like that, it's not what I'm looking for. It's the contrast uh, between the between light and shadow what I'm more interested right now when when drawing when drawing. Well, sorry, when painting. At this moment, I'm defining also the more the beard. I'm starting to add some detail to the to the beard, uh, defining very very loosely um, uh, some details, some decorations on the beard, like like if uh, hanging from the from the mustache was uh, were some uh, some sort of uh, piggy tails or, or whatnot. This, if you watch uh, a lot of fantasy dwarves from movies and from the video games, you can see they usually have that nor Nordic type of uh, of beards with some stuff around, like hanging like metal pieces, uh, some ball seams, whatever you know. So, and all for tidying the different different parts of the beard. 
very important is that you have to think I'm keeping everything quite loose and and I, w I want to reiterate again not to define very much like some areas and try to keep everything loose for the moment because you are playing more with volumes instead of, of really define uh, fine sh the fine lines and you will define the shapes and you will make them pop up more adding more light or darkening some areas so it's quite important that you keep everything loose and little by little you start to accent uh, accentuate areas for example like I'm doing here right now when I'm, I'm working on the on the eyebrows adding some some bright tones to the to the hair on the eyebrows basically also I'm starting to add some some darker tones uh, to, the, to the sides of the nostrils uh, also under the eyebrows near to the eye it's it's very important that you that you start, that you start to create some contrast there Again, more uh, more brighter tones. This time to the to the nose, to the to the bone cheeks, also to a little bit to the mustache. Use you, you in f uh, and check how I'm adding all those bright tones around the, this main area that I commented you before uh, around the the close the eyes the eye which, which is close to, close to us and where the main light source is hitting. And I'm leaving the the other the other part of the face a little bit more loose, a little bit like with less uh, detail and less light. So we are creating a, a more depth and also a hierarchy. So the the viewer can can immediately focus on one part of the face and which is like the main part of the face. And second uh, and, and and after that he can focus in other parts of the face. So but it's very important that you focus the attention of the viewer immediately in one point. This is pretty crucial to make faces not also very believable and attractive to the eye, or uh, also uh, to uh, to create a hierarchy of importance uh, in your painting and helping the uh, helping the viewer and guiding him to, uh, towards the main areas that, that you want him to to look at. Also, adding uh, decoration to the ears and this time is earrings. Uh, of course, I will add more detail. I will put uh, some lights to it, to to them. So uh, at this stage, like I said, I'm I'm also defining. It's very important to also to know that I'm improvising a lot. I I'm I'm playing around a little bit. I don't have a clear idea of, of what is going to be the final design of the character. I'm just like fooling around a little bit. If you wanna if you wanna say that. And little by little, I will be adding detail, removing, uh, and playing with the value to to really see if 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 I have enough depth and I can create some uh, re real nice volume on on the character's face. I'm darkening the mustache right now, and also I'm casting a little bit of shadow under the, under the nose, so that also helped me to to make the nose pop up a little bit more, and also the upper part of the mustache will pop up more because the lower part of the mustache, we're near to the lips, will be uh, will be more in shadows. And again, we we are using uh, using this technique and doing this will convey the idea of volume, not all, uh, not only like I said in the nose, also in in the in the hair and of the mustache itself. Now I'm adding more light to the shadow, uh, to sorry, to the face, and highlighting even more uh, that part of the, the the face that I wanna that I wanna be that I wanted to be more highlighted. And I'm leaving, like I said, like I said before, I'm leaving the the other part, the other side of the face, a little more in shadows. Also, I'm uh, I was I created a little bit of shadow casted over the the, the the eye on the left, the eye who is a little bit uh, who is uh, a little bit more in shadows. And also that will help me to create more depth, more volume. Another thing that I want to, to remind you is not to use uh, fully dark tones like pure black and also not pure white. Although it seems that I'm using pure white, it's not. I'm using a, 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 lighter, a lighter color of gray and also I'm not using uh, pure black. The reason of that is because uh, those those tones instead of colors sorry i will say tones because they are not colors are always if you use them and then you try to apply color and combining to them the the, the result will look a little bit dirty it will, it, it will not look nice and also if you want to add color later on 
you will have trouble applying the applying the color over pure black or pure or pure white because the color will not really I mean unless you cover the the area again which will be pointless to do that because you are killing the 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 value uh, you will not be able to uh, to fully apply color over over that area but if you use some variations of gray you can really taint that area with uh, with the color you want and and can really look nice using some layer modes like let's say soft light which you have to use careful because uh, a little carefully because it affects the your value so you have a, a value established or created already when you are having your your grayscale uh, painting you have to use soft light with uh, with a lot of caution Overlays even worse than that, but if you use color, for example, uh, color mode, it will it will leave the color all, all over your values without affecting and changing them. Although you have to you have to work a lot over that color you apply using color mode because the if you just leave it like that it will look a little bit washed out. So back to the drawing. Uh, again, I'm detailing more now. It's time to create even more volume, adding more shadows under the eyes, adding more shadows under the nose, and f like I said, I'm focusing all around the the eyebrows, the nose, adding light. That is my main goal. Now I'm going to be starting adding some light to the to the beard and also to the hair and I start to really add some de more detail to that part of the area. Um, I will say that I've been neglecting a little bit the beard because I wanted to focus more in, in really uh, have uh, have the the face the face itself more finished the skin the skin parts this, uh, and now I'm like just adding. Uh, some brighter tones to the beard because I want to make my dwarf a little bit old and I'm also again using big brush strokes not going hair by hair this is a one of the this is one typical uh, beginner's mistake is start to draw like uh, right away like little thin little thin strains of hair and that will that will make your beard look very weird so you first of all you need to create like big uh, brush strokes like creating like like big pieces of hair and and then you know, if you want to add some detail like later on you can add like like single hairs coming out and stuff like that but it will be that that will be done in in, in, the, in later stages when towards the end when you are detailing i'm also adding some some detail to the to the beard decorations and just painting them dark and adding a little bit, uh, some some bright line to to convey the idea of light reflecting on, on the on the material as you can see the face is uh, it's or it's already quite advanced and you can really uh, immediately see how the face looks and and really you can f you can see some volume or some depth uh, in the face but what now really bothers me or annoys me a little bit about the about the face is that although it's, it's quite it's quite a, all the features the facial features are quite a, quite readable I, must, I feel I still feel the the face needs a little bit of contrast and how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the bright and contrast uh, levels, and I'm gonna tweak them a little bit. Uh, a li a li a I'm gonna tweak them a little bit. Um, if you go just to in Photoshop to adjustment or if whatever the software you're using, just go to the bright and contrast uh, levels. You just tweak them a little bit, or you can also use curves to do that. It all depends of of what you what technique you prefer the most. Uh, when darkening the face, uh, what you if you are using Photoshop, it's important that if you darken the face a little bit, first of all, you it's better if you du uh, duplicate the layer where you are painting, so you have a, a copy in case you you fucked up basically and you and, and you did and you do some mistakes. Once you have the that face that uh, layer duplicated, you can darken it. Like I said, using uh, brightness and contrast, or using levels or or curves, whatever you you prefer the most, and then you can use. Uh, um, you can mask the 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 layer the layer and start to darken some part of the mask so the 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 layer which is below 
the which has the the original version of of the of the face uh, can appear uh, from from below and you can see you can see a combination of both and and the result here is that you can f you can see that I prefer to leave some uh, parts uh, some parts darker like the left side of the face some some bottom parts of the beard etc and I just erase part of the or I just not erased I just uh, mask some part of the of the of the upper layer, the layer which is in the, uh, darker, so I can see that bright brighter. I can see brighter tones coming from the from the copy layer uh, below, and that helps me to create uh, more contrast and also make my values more more interesting. So this is the end of part one of this tutorial. Uh, if you like it, like I said, please subscribe, click the bell notification, and also if you want to know more about what I do and my tutorials, you can click the link in the description. It will take you to my blog. It's called improveyourdrawings.com. Okay, so stay tuned for the next, in the second part of this tutorial, and see you pretty soon. Bye bye.